Hello, everyone. My name is Matthew Fraley. I'm the founder of BreakpointTrades.com. We've been bringing you advanced technical analysis, market commentary, trade ideas, and mechanical systems, like you see here with our SPY system. We've been doing that since 2003 for individual traders and professional institutions and clients, some of which I consult with on a weekly basis. By the way, on that SPY system, which you just saw on the previous slide, it's 2022. Those systems tend to do better in a volatile year. So I think 2022 could be quite a nice year for our SPY systems. I'll do a separate video on that one of these days. But anyway, getting back to the video at hand, this is gonna be a technical review of the markets, commodities, cryptocurrencies, precious metals, and it's Martin Luther King Day, 2022. I already recorded the my extremely mark my extremely comprehensive market newsletter for Breakpoint Trade subscribers. I haven't done a YouTube video on the market for a while, state of the market, so that's what this is. This is a bit condensed down from what we provide our customers. Still quite a bit of content here, as you can see via the table of contents divided into 10 major sections. Again, we look at everything in a broad-based fashion from the general market, major indexes, sectors, important indicators, commodities, bonds, currencies, precious metals, and a review of a couple recent trade ideas. Again, the U.S. markets were closed on Monday in honor of Dr. King, so hopefully everyone had a nice three-day week. I know I did. Normally, I do these recordings on Sunday, but I did today's on Monday because of the holiday. Before I get into the general market, a couple of the things I'm gonna follow up on is symmetry. Remember, I did a educational video on symmetry a couple weeks ago, showing you that very useful tool. And that is what helped me identify the XLE energy area and the banking area. Those two sectors, especially the energy area has outperformed all other sectors this year. XLE is up 16 and a quarter percent for this year. Again, contrast that with the S&P, which is down 2.2 percent, the NASDAQ, which is down almost 5 percent. So the symmetry breaks helped us identify those two hot sectors. And by the way, I think energy is going to outperform in 2022 and possibly the bank area and commodities. Remember, we've been seeing a shift out of high-tech valuations, with high PE, high growth, and into more value plays. We've been seeing that since late last year. We've seen a stealth bear market, especially in the NASDAQ, with 50% with 40% of the stocks in the NASDAQ down 50% or more from their 52-week highs. When you look at the indexes, you don't see that. That's because of the weightings that you know, for the indexes like Microsoft and Apple that skew those indexes. I think we're going to continue to see that rotation this year. Now, short term, markets are near support. We either rally from here, but we could also get a quick flush to the downside, which is what some of our wave counts are suggesting. We do have earnings season starting. Usually the market holds up in earnings season, but it doesn't have to. It doesn't mean we also can't get a quick flush before earnings season. So, Anyway, let's go ahead and review everything. So this first slide, again, if, you've, if you watched my educational video on symmetry, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you did not, I suggest that you do so. I'll provide a link in the video description to that video on symmetry. I highly recommend that you watch it. It's very powerful. It's a very simple method, but it's extremely powerful. Works on anything. I'm not gonna go through all that in depth here. Please watch the video if you haven't done so. But one thing I discussed in the video, again, is I discussed the power of symmetry, that when you break a symmetry uptrend or downtrend, how it's very powerful and it tells you with high odds that that current trend is over, either if it's an uptrend or a downtrend. So using that enabled me to identify the energy sector is an area to focus on a few weeks back. So as I stated, XLE, the energy ETF is up 
16 and a quarter percent this year. So along with XLE and OAH ETFs, we put out quite a few names from Exxon Mobil and many other individual energy names, all which have done very well. I'm not going to go through all those, but just doing a follow up on symmetry. Here's XLE. All right. We had an inverse head and shoulder back here, which we began an uptrend. Then we pulled back in that November, December time frame, and you measure the rallies, right? So measuring the, ra the rallies, that was your first major rally in this little downtrend. This rally from here stalled exactly at the uh, measurement, so symmetry. And then from here, notice you broke symmetry. Okay, this break in symmetry in late December was bullish. You had a bullish break in symmetry that told you with high odds that you're going to start some sort of uptrend and form a higher low. So that gave you early warning notification that the energy sector was likely to do well. So you had an opportunity to either buy this pullback or you could have bought the trend line break, which is what I pointed out to the website back on January 1st. And uh, it's had a powerful move. Now, what we're hoping for is that it eventually have some sort of correction. You know, it's just been a straight up trend. A lot of folks I know are looking to buy a correction. So far, we haven't gotten that. We do have a little CCI negative divergence here. So we'll see if that can play out. Um, but this is a sector that I'm definitely a buyer on decent consolidations. Another little uh, education tip, guys. Most of my charts have these simple moving averages. And I use the exponential moving averages for the ribbons. So it's the areas where they squeeze here, that's when you have energy pent up and typically you can have your big moves. You get an inverse head and shoulder pattern here. Energy was set up for a nice move. Your ribbon was pinched right at the end of that pattern. And then you got the nice move. Just like here, you had the symmetry break, consolidation, higher low, and energy was bent up here with all the moving average lines all on top of one another. It's kind of like a coiled spring. So energy was set to release and that's what it's done. All right. So these moving averages are very good guides. I use two sets. I, my standard one is the 9, 20, 34, and 50 length if you want to copy that. Anyway, one year ago, in early January 2021, I postulated that commodities would outperform in 2021, and they did. The DBC commodity ETF gained about 45% in 2021. Again, that was quite a bit better than the S&P, which gained 27%, better than the NASDAQ, obviously well, better than the Russell, which lagged last year. So this year, my prediction is that energy and commodities are going to outperform the general market, maybe even banks because of the rising rates. So here's a ratio chart of XLE uh, to S&P. So you can see for years now, remember, this is a weekly chart. Since 2014 here, it's been declining. 2016, you did have energy outperform a little bit, but then you resumed back in the trend. It's been downtrending. Well, you could see last year, XLE came back very nicely. The ratio started turning up. In fact, XLE was up 50% last year, so it outperformed the S&P. But notice this beautiful bullish pattern you have. You have an ascending triangle here. Moving average ribbon looks like it wants to flip to the upside. This looks super bullish, guys. So I think this goes quite a bit higher, and I think energy stocks outperform in 2000. 22. So if you want an area to focus on, one that you can maybe not worry about day trading and looking at every tick, you work a busy job, I think energy is an area to watch. Bank sector is also an area to monitor. Here's KBE, the bank ETF. You could see on Friday last week, it had pulled back, but bounced right off the 9 EMA. Like energy, it's had a heck of a move here. It's probably going to be due for some sort of consolidation. You can see the RSI indicators are sky high. Five, the five length RSI, 92.6%. We have a little CCI divergence. Also, you can see how symmetry helped us identify that 
this was going to start an uptrend. Little downtrend here. Measure your first rally. This rally, you saw a bullish break in symmetry that told you with high odds to form a higher low, which we got, and then nice rally up. The only caveat with banks I see is that the yield curve I've been noticing has been declining. And so despite the fact that rates have been increased from the Fed, which help banks, if banks really make their money on the spread. And uh, so if that spread continues to narrow, that'll hinder the bank. So we got to keep an eye on that yield curve. Moving back to the general market. So we're going to review the major indexes. Here's a weekly view of the S&P. See, I got my moving average ribbon here. This is your price. But by the way, since I started this video discussing symmetry, since the March 2020 lows, remember this was our mast, that was a huge sell-off back there during the COVID, about a 30% correction before we've had this straight up vertical move. We've had such a strong uptrend since this March 2020 low. I do believe 2022 is going to be a much choppier year. You know, you cannot maintain this amount of uptrend. You eventually need some sort of consolidation, sideways chop, whatever. So I think 2022 is going to be a much try more trying year for the market. But anyway, the dotted lines here represent symmetry. The largest pullback in your uptrend after the March 2020 low was right here in September 2020. That was about 380 points. So that's the largest area to monitor for long-term symmetry. So none of these pullbacks have obviously break it, broken this symmetry. Now you can measure these smaller pullbacks. And so far, these major pullbacks, corrections we've had since then, you know, the one in October 2020, the one in August of, this, of last year and November, were roughly equal to each other. Okay, But I will say momentum is declining here. You can see MACD is diverging, et cetera. All right. Next, here's the daily view of the S&P. You can draw this clean uptrend channel. Okay. By the way, you can see that correction there in November. That gave us the, tar the target to the downside on that correction from late December into early January. Notice how the S&P bounced perfectly at symmetry. So that's an example of symmetry giving you that price target. So if you had monitored this symmetry, you could have had a low risk buy limit order waiting there to buy that pullback. Remember from my uh, video on symmetry, I discussed how you can use the symmetries as areas for price targets on sell-offs or rallies and downtrends to short opportunities. So while we look for breaks in symmetry, it's very useful for target areas like this. All right, so perfect rally from symmetry there. Wasn't broken, we're still in this channel. S&P rallied up to this resistance zone, which matched this November high, so logical area, and pulled back. Now we'll see what happens here this week going forward. Next, here's a very simple, clean daily S&P if you just wanna keep it simple. So first off, here's your symmetry. You can see you could also draw a nice clean uptrend line connecting three data points from the December lows to the recent January low. This is your big support area, guys. If you have to be long the S&P or S&P related funds, this is like your support area. Maybe have you could have a trail, some sort of stop out in this area if you're long. Because really, if it starts to break this area, then we're likely to get a flush down maybe down into this area, even the 200 day moving average. All right, so this is your big area you need to monitor. Clearly we're at near a support, which we bounced on Friday and we'll see what happens this week. A lot of resistance up in here. Again, the market usually holds up during earnings season and there is quite a bit of bearishness out there. So we'll see if that can help. But, um, you know, there's also quite a bit of negative forces underneath the surface. Next, here's a two-hour chart of the S&P. This is something we're monitoring, a possible little slanted 
head and shoulder pattern here. Again, this is your major support area, so we could easily just rally up here, negate this, right? But you want to keep an eye on this. There's a couple things to monitor. First off, there's an op there's a couple open gaps here. There's an open gap here from mid-December. A lot of times you'll find for the cash indexes, these open gaps like to get filled. That's my concern is we never filled this gap, you know, on this pullback here. We just got to the top portion of it. And uh, this still could be a magnet. So if we come down, this is my immediate target, this gap. But if we start really undercutting some of these areas in here, then you have this, you know, if things were really to flush down, you have this potential head and shoulder pattern, even though I don't like slanted patterns like this as much. But you can see if you measure the height of the pattern, notice how it conveniently measures to this open gap. So just a few things to be aware of, guys. You don't want to be caught off guard. Next, here's a 60-minute view. So a couple, you know, late December, early January, we were trading in this range. Price broke from the range. We had a little five wave decline here, which I don't have marked. Again, you can see this open gap, how we got, we basically tested the top of the gap. I would have felt better if price would have filled that gap. Didn't, it rallied up, formed the lower high. We were looking for this area to fail. We told all our subscribers that we favored a lower high up in here. We didn't think we'd get back up into this range. So our astute subscribers could have shorted this bounce. Came down pretty nicely. We're still holding this you know, support area in here, this trend line. But uh, something to monitor, guys. Again, we either go up from here, we hold this area, or but if we break these areas, um, be aware of that. Next, here's a 10-minute chart showing a potential wave count. You can count five waves down here. This sideways move could be considered an ABC. And, you know, a very valid count would have us going right down from here. Remember, an immediate target would be filling that open gap I showed from mid-December. Next, here's another 10-minute chart. Shows you three different counts. You know, the one problem with wave counts is, you know, you always have multiple variations. But again, you could see two variations. One, which I showed, could have us going down immediately, like this in red. Another one could have us rallying up higher in the purple. And forming a lower high and then eventually declining. We actually favor one of these over this green one, which has us just going right up and then eventually going to new highs. So, but if you, if you get over the 61 fib, especially into this area, then likely the green area is gonna win out. But right now we kind of, we're favoring one of these, just giving some of the things we've been seeing under the surface. We'll see, again, you're bullish, or the positive thing is you have earnings season. But uh, anyway, that's the options that we're monitoring. Lastly, here's a five minute view. And this just shows you some nice examples of symmetry. So first off, here's Friday. You can see how symmetry gave you the tar price target for that low, which I pointed out to our subscribers. Gave a nice low opportunity, bounce opportunity on Friday. And then we had a falling wedge. You had a nice trade opportunity into that. By the way, currently futures tonight, ES futures are up one point, so they're very flat. So we'll see how things open on Monday. Moving on, here's the Dow. Not much to say with the Dow here. This is the weekly chart. Longer term, we'll monitor these symmetry declines. You can see all the longer term declines. None of them have broken symmetry at this point. We do have some divergences forming longer term. Here's the daily view of the Dow. Symmetry, notice how price back here, early January stalled right at that symmetry target. Moving to the Qs. You can see early last week on Monday, we undercut this uptrend line here, then recovered. We formed a lower high here, stalled at these moving averages, the 50, 20 day came back down. We're still holding the trend line for now. We do have a little symmetry break here. So we did get a little lower high established here. Moving out to the a longer time frame, Q's chart. These still, these two options still apply, either come down or this whole thing could be a fourth wave like we still see here with an eventual move to a new high and a wave five. 
your big symmetry, we, we never broke that. The largest pullback, again, was that September 2020 decline, like you see here. And you can see cloning this line to here. We haven't broken that yet. Here's a 60-minute view. You can see how this rally here stalled with the moving average ribbons where they pinched. Moving on to the Russell. Here's the Russell weekly chart. As you know, the Russell has really been going sideways for a year. We had that little quick break out of the pattern here. didn't go very far. Faded out. Came right back in. You did have a little break in symmetry here. So... Odds favor potentially a lower high. We're still holding this big support. Now, if you're to lose this area, this area really is an area of little support. It's where price ran up through here. Not much support into this area. So bulls really need to kind of hold this area. Here's the daily view. Again, you can see this chop we've had since, you know, basically March of last year. This is your big shelf support. Still holding it. We did have a little bullish symmetry break here. If you measure this, these two rallies, this rally exceeded it. So there is possible odds for a higher low into here. Now, moving on to the FANG type stocks. It's always good to monitor these. Plus, we're under earnings season. Here's Microsoft. A couple examples. So first off, Microsoft. You got a little symmetry break here. And then you looked for a lower high. You did get two perfect lower highs here. Notice how these highs were perfectly symmetrical. So once you had this one, that gave you the target of this. Would have been a great short. All right. You had a little symmetry break here. Price had a little Pinocchio move below this trend line. Came back. You had a doji on Wednesday. Those are always your warning and then reverse down. Again, we have earnings season. A lot of times these stocks get bought up into earnings with folks anticipating. So we'll see if we can move up into that or not. 200 day moving average though, isn't very far away. If you wanted to get a quick flush, that would be an easy magnet. Here's the longer term view of Microsoft. These, this is the weekly view, this is your symmetry. We did have a little break in symmetry, at least with respect to these sell-offs. Okay. We obviously, your largest other pullback would have been the February, March, 2020. Clearly that never broke. Notice that would measure down to this area. Here's Google. Kind of sideways action, quite honestly, since September. These represent symmetry. We did have a little symmetry break here. So lower high so far into these moving averages. 200 day moving average was almost tagged this time, not quite. So that still could be a magnet area. That's your big support down into here. Amazon has went nowhere for a good year, year and a half. It's currently near a support area. Hasn't done a lot. Amazon on the weekly. So as you can see, a lot of sideways movement. Here's some your symmetry pullbacks. Notice the pullback here. We haven't broken any symmetries. Pull back here, need a move below about 3,100 to break symmetry. Apple or Crapple, we added as a little short setup. It gave you a quick trade. Didn't quite make it to the 50 day. No break in symmetries at this point. So we'll see if Apple can go up again. You know, Apple cannot support the entire market, but uh, we'll see what this does. And finally, here's a weekly chart of Apple. I know a lot of folks out there who hold Apple, they never sell it. You know, they think they're always safe in Apple. And most of the time you are, but my suggestion, guys, is always have some sort of exit plan, regardless. I don't care if it's Apple or whatever. You think it's a sure thing. You always want some sort of exit plan. So I understand things with Apple. You don't want to stop out on any noise, you know, especially if it's in, you know, a non-tax account or a taxable account. You don't want to incur taxes. You don't want to lose your position. I get it. But you got to always have some sort of exit plan. So, you know, if you're wanting to give it wide girth, maybe use a month, a weekly chart like I show here. A very simple method would be setting your trailing stop to each new higher low like I show here. So gives you quite a wide stop at this point. That's your last higher low. But it generally 
will keep you in uptrends for many years. You know, and my point is employ some sort of method or also use my symmetry method. You can see the largest pullbacks have been right here. So if you have a pullback larger than the weekly symmetry, that could also be a get out of dodge. The point is use have some sort of exit strategy, even on your positions, you know, that you think you're 100% safe on. Next, here's NVIDIA, another one of these FANG type stocks. It's been working lower. Um, big supports approaching down here, uptrend line. There's an open gap that was never filled. It could be a magnet as well. All right, moving on to some indicators. Here's the VIX. So VIX on Friday rallied and stalled at the upper Bollinger Bands there. So far, resistance. This is also a good guide to keep whenever the VIX gets under correlated with the S&P. Notice how that tends to give early notifications of some sort of pullback in the market. You can see back here. Sometimes it's early, but it's usually pretty good back here in late December. It went uncorrelated for a day or so. Gave you an early warning before that correction. Next, here's the VVIX. It's also been an awesome early warning indicator. All right. Whenever it goes above this 110 area, it's called the VOMA line. I don't know why they call it that, but currently it's 110. So your signal is whenever it's below 110 and crosses above 110, like you see here. It's below 110. When it then goes back above 110, that's your warning. And usually it's a great signal corresponding with some sort of pullback in the market. It's like here, when above 110, right here in early September before that correction. Okay. Recently here in late December, you can see up here. And it tends to end with these spikes, like you see here, these spikes. All right. Well, these spikes. So, so currently we had it's come up above 110 back here, early, late December, early January. And it had a little, it's come up here, but is that really enough of a spike? Usually you get more up here. So that, to me, that's still, it's kind of a warning that we haven't gotten that spike. But this is a great indicator to use, guys, is early warnings. Next, here's the put call ratio. It is above its upper Bollinger Bands, so the short term. A um, little bit of fear out there. Sometimes you get a bounce when that's above the upper Bollinger Bands, kind of like you see here. You know, a little bit of fear out there. These breadth indicators, like the NASI, that's the NASDAQ, and this is the plotted as a summation. So we started seeing early warning signs of market breadth way back even in say July, August. You could see how the NASI curled down here and went was going down despite the fact the NASDAQ was making new highs here in October and November. What that told you was there was a lot of stocks under the surface, kind of like a cancer that were getting taken to the woodshed that wasn't obvious in the indexes. Another way to look at the NASI is this. You can see how it's been mostly negative here since the July time frame. Okay, even back here when the NASDAQ was up at new highs, strongly negative. That hinted at the negative breadth. Here's another indication, the NAHL. But primarily, this very simple indicator, the percentage of stocks above the 200-day moving average, this fell below 50% back there in July, never recovered. While the NASDAQ, you know, then after the pullback here in September went to new highs, this hardly even budged. So this was a big warning. And especially back there in November, we talked about that back there in before Thanksgiving. So this is where you, another place that you've seen it is this breadth indicator. Here's the NASDAQ, it's a weekly chart. These indicators here are the new 52 week highs here in blue, new 52 week lows, and 
the 52 week highs minus the 52 week lows. So look what happened back here, especially in early November. The number of new, new stocks in the NASDAQ making new 52 week, new yearly highs was spiking, okay? Just like you see back in these major corrections. Spiking, that was, they started doing that before the market sold off. And the difference, declining, okay? I did a separate video on this. You don't usually see this, or many times, most of the time you see this during previous before markets have major corrections, like 2008, you saw this activity in 2007, you saw it in 2015. So this was a worrying sign. I talked about this even back in December. I said, we need to monitor this going forward. This difference between the 52-week highs and lows needs to go back above zero. If it doesn't, then the market's going to be in trouble this year. Here's a daily version of those same indicators. Again, look at the number of new 52-week highs. I mean, new 52-week lows. Look at this, how much it's spiking. Way back here when the NASDAQ was making new all-time highs, look at the number of new lows you had spiking. The difference, look how lo low the difference is. Again, this is very important. You can see how buried this is. Remember when I said in my opening comments that 40% of the stocks in the NASDAQ are down more than 50% off their 52-week highs. You've had a stealth bear market cancer under the surface, okay? Think of the Pelotons. Think of the Stitch Fixes, Zoom, all those stocks that are like Christmas tree patterns. That's what you're seeing with this action. Another one, NYSE. This is not quite as bad, but you could still see the difference here, and of course, the number of new 52-week lows. Moving to bonds, here's TLT, 20-year bonds. You can see, broke this trend line support, back tested the 200-day, moving down. Here's the 10-year Treasury yield, pulled back, bull flagging off the 9 EMA. If this rallies this week, that could possibly put some pressure on the market, okay? Be aware of that. Looks bullish. Here's the weekly view of the 10-year Treasury yield. I've been saying this looks super bullish. If this is the stock, you would buy it. So my minimum target is this 2% area up here. Way to play that would be TMV. That's the triple inverse ETF for TLT or TBT. One thing to keep an eye on is this yield curve. It's, the yield curve is the 10-year divided by the two-year. All right, it's not inverted. But notice how far this ratio has fallen. Early last year, it was up at 13. That's the difference between, again, the 10-year and the two-year. It's now way down here at 180. Again, this is a log chart, guys. So remember, this distance looks further away than it is. You can see how it condenses up in here. If this continues to decline, remember, even though everyone thinks the banks are going to do well because of rising rates, Banks make their money off the difference between the spread and the spread is narrowing here. This shows you that the economy has been um, slowing. So especially if it gets down into here, that'll be a warning. We got to keep an eye on this yield curve. Now, let's look at some market sectors. I already discussed energy, how I think uh, energy is going to lead in 2022. This is the XLE S&P ratio. It looks super bullish. Remember, guys, over the last you know six, seven years, these energy companies have not been putting a lot of money back into new wells, new refineries. And a lot of that is because of the political environment. Everything's green energy. Oil's bad. Fossil fuels are bad. You know, well, commodities go on supply. The way the commodity cycle has always worked is that these companies would uh, the build new mines and wells, refineries. They would get supply up. Supp that supply would cause prices to pull back. And then eventually, you know, the whole cycle repeats. But they haven't been putting the money in to develop those resources. So I think we're going to see supply issues unless the economy really crashes. But I think that'll cause oil and energy to really possibly go up quite a bit this year. Here's a weekly view of XLE. 
look how bullish this looks. Two weeks ago, it broke this weekly trend line. Beautiful follow through. Long term, again, this is going much higher. I would be a bu dip buyer on dips. Here's XLE daily, as I already discussed. We had that symmetry break back here in late December. And you had a buy opportunity right here on this trend line break. Short term, a little extended with the CCI divergence. So I wouldn't want to be chasing it here. Here's another daily chart showing some symmetries. Notice using this rally, we have a possible little symmetry target up here. My hope is we get a consolidation pullback on this soon. Next, oil services. Oil, this is a weekly chart going back to 2013. Looks bullish, breaking out of a coil. Notice oil services were back here, traded at 1,000. All right. Now, oil services aren't as profitable potentially as energy, but uh, this sector too, I think, will benefit with rising oil. So one area to keep an eye on. Here's OAH itself. I identified this bull diamond pattern a few weeks back. So if you bought that breakout, you've done well. You can see your symmetry breaks and trend line break last week. Short term, the BP... BPNER, that's the bullish percent energy index, is up here at 95%. Remember, this is a percent from zero to 100. So the stocks are a bit overbought here. Doesn't mean they won't go higher. Like I said, I'm a buyer on pullbacks, but just showing you it's up here at 95% at the short term. Here's the bank sector. Again, strong uptrend, held the 90 EMA even on Friday. You see your symmetry break, bullish symmetry break back here. Here's the bank S&P ratio. Not quite as bullish looking as the XLE S&P ratio, but still looks decent. Here's financials. Also uptrend, not as strong as the banks though. XLK technology, very similar to the NASDAQ. First off, you could see that last rally stalled right at there at the symmetry. That's your big support area down here. XLC communication sector. It's been downtrending since September. Recently stalled at the 200-day moving average here in trend line. Support here, resistance here. Semiconductors have been strong, but we did have a little symmetry break here. So could have a higher, lower high in here. We also have a potential little rounded top here. If we get down to this area, this is a thin zone. Be aware of that, a little area of support. Your big support's really down here. Biotech, an area I'm monitoring closely. I do own a little position of this. This underperformed last year, down 22%. These are some of my major support areas I've been targeting, which we tagged on Friday. Didn't get down to this one, but let's, here's a daily view. First off, here's your symmetry rallies. Longer term, it's got to break this symmetry. Shorter term, here's the symmetry I'm monitoring. And finally, Here's the 60-minute chart. Reason I bought it on Monday, it had a falling wedge with MACD divergence. Now, measuring from this, uh, Jan this December high right here. So you measure your symmetry rallies in blue. Notice how every rally stalled there. And it gives us our initial target on this wedge, about 101. If we exceed this, then we'll have a break in symmetry with respect to this high. Remember, symmetry is relative to the time frame you are following. So um, that'll be the first thing that needs to break. But so far, a nice little trade out of the wedge. But we got to monitor the symmetry. Other sectors, transports, got a little triple top back here. So, so far, it looks okay, but 200 day moving average below here. Retail, it looks quite ugly. Way down here, quite ways below the 200 day. I'm showing you all these sectors here, guys, to give you a perspective of what things look like under the surface instead of just the weighted indexes. Also, you can see how this lower high here, which stalled at the 200 day, notice how you're moving average ribbon pinch there on the bearish underside. You can see how those ribbons are very useful. Home builders, we had a symmetry break back here. Told us to look for a lower high, which we got here. Essentially double top, and it's been downtrending. Still looks lower. 
real estate still up trending, but you know, kind of weak here. A little trend line here, but that could easily break and move down to the 200 day. Utilities look a little vulnerable here. If it loses this trend line support, kind of a sort of a head and shoulder look. Consumer staples still very strong, bouncing off the 20 day. Industrials also still quite strong. EWZ, Brazil. So with some of these commodities looking bullish, this is a heavily commodity, commoditized um, area. Notice your symmetry rallies in blue. So price is nearing the symmetry. We could fail here again, but it looks like it's trying to base here. So, and the moving average ribbon's trying to curl up. So this is an area I have some interest in. Moving to commodities, crude oil. Up six and a quarter percent last week. Be mindful of a potential double top in here. Here's the daily view of crude oil. Again, I think crude oil could have a quite a rally in 2022. I wouldn't be surprised if we see well north of $100. Here's the monthly view. We broke this long downtrend line back in 2021. So we're working higher. DBA. Agriculture ETF, tight coil trying to break out. Ribbons pinched here, so energy is pent up. Longer term, it's uptrending here. You can see this monthly chart broke out of this multi-year downtrend line. I talked about that in 2020, as you know. And uh, one thing to monitor as well is the DBA S&P ratio here. It's basing. Moving average ribbons are pinched to hell. The S&P has outperformed commodity, these agriculture for years, as you can see. But it's in an area here where it could potentially rally off of, which means DBA could outperform the S&P or the S&P, it could simply not be down as much as the S&P. Realize that, all right? Moving to cryptocurrencies, here's Bitcoin. As you know, after it lost the shelf support here, we expected lower prices, fell to here. It did bounce off, but it needs to ultimately break symmetry, which is this, these symmetry rallies. It needs to get above 46,000 to break downtrend symmetry, okay? We point, you can see a nice sell-off from that divergent high back here. Ethereum, also downtrending. Here's your symmetry. So far, the rally has failed at this shorter term symmetry here, as you can see. Mara, one of the major stocks I follow. It's been in this downtrend. Hopefully none of you guys rode this thing all the way down. It's interesting down in here. Heck, the thing was up in the $83 range. It's now in the 20s. There is a support here. The MACD is trying to form some divergence, but we do have some open gaps here, which could still be magnets. Here's a two hour chart I'm monitoring for a trigger. I'd like to see at least a break of this downtrend line here on this time frame. Oh, also on the Bitcoin, on Wednesday, Rhodium is going IPO. I'm gonna be watching that. Lastly, here's uh, US dollar. Nice pullback in the dollar last week. That's help commodities. Here's the US dollar on the daily. Broke down through this support. There is a support here. We'll see if it can bounce off here. But now this area up here is resistance. Moving to precious metals, gold is forming a tight coil. It's possible 2022 it could finally break out of this coil. My hope is to the upside. Keep an eye on the ratio here. That's the GDX GLD ratio. You want to see gold out you want to see gdx the gold stocks outperform relative to the metal you can also draw a coil on the on the rsi so this is the what i'm monitoring here's another weekly view of gold you can see this nice coil forming daily view you can see the coil monitor the ratio guys the stocks need to outperform so that's why we want to monitor that ratio 
Moving to the gold stocks themselves, GDX weekly view up 3.2% for the week. You can see this little symmetry target. Again, GDX has been downtrending in a correction really since mid-2020. Here's the daily view. Have this higher double bottom here, higher low. We'll see if this can eventually stage some sort of rally attempt. Some individual names, BVN, we liked this a week ago. It's a nice move out of this pattern. But here's some other ones that I'm monitoring, guys. So GOLD, not gold, but Barrick Gold, the stock. Weekly view, falling wedge. And this ratio trend line, this looks potentially bullish. This is one I'm going to be monitoring for a longer term trade if I see um, this breaking out. AUI, Yamana, same deal. Notice that ratio is curling up. You have this wedge pattern. SVM, here's another wedge. You can see nice correction from this 2020 high. Wedging, MACD divergence. So some of these to monitor. They haven't broken or anything yet. TGB, big weekly coil forming. And SBSW, you have a symmetry break here. So, and notice your ratio is curling up. It's outperforming relative to the metal. So this one here looks, is broken a symmetry. It was enough for me to take an initial position. Following up on some recent trade ideas, Amgen. We had this as a coil pattern. So, so far it's been moving nicely higher. McDonald's, we had it as a short, obviously playing out well. MGY, one of the energy names. Had a clean resistance breaking out. WMB, here's another energy name. Nice clean level here. My only concern is energy stocks really need a consolidation. So if this breaks out, I just maybe is a quick trade. Zim, if you're looking for a dividend type play, they have about a 16% yield. $10 per share, low PE. This could be a place for a trail, a, a stop. This higher low. Nile. Now, this one interests me, guys. Nile. Um, this company does a lot of different things. You might want to look into it. I'm not going to go into that, but it's obviously downtrending. It's had a pretty good correction. Technically, we have a falling wedge divergence showing up. But what really intrigues me is the chairman of the board has made large purchases all last year. And for much higher prices. Let's take a look at that. So Nile, here's the insider purchases. By the way, they did a symbol change. It was DPW. But look at this. He bought 253,000 shares for $1.25 on December 30th. First, he bought 170,000 shares on December 8th, $1.74. 100,000 shares here, 428,000 shares here on December 2nd, 2.6 million shares at $1.92 on November 20. But look at these purchases. Very few sells and small sales at that. So you can see his prices are much higher than current prices. And, uh, you know, a lot of his purchases are back up in here and here. And the fact that it's wedging. Also, by the way, they announced a stock repurchase plan of $50 million over the next three years. So they're gonna, the company's going to be buying stock back as well. So with all that there, I think this could be a low-risk spec play down here with a stop. So I'm monitoring this wedge as a technical trigger. You know, I want to see a trigger. It's been downtrending. I don't want to just buy it and have it go lower, catch a falling knife. You know, if it can start breaking out of this wedge, some volume. That'll be enough of a trigger for me to establish a position. All right, guys, that'll do it. That's enough here for this newsletter. And uh, like I said, we'll see what happens this week and the rest of the month. Take care and enjoy your evening or day or whenever you're watching this.